Hey everyone, this is Kim with Abundant Life Tarot, and I wanted to talk about the controversy surrounding the Lightseer's Tarot Ten of Swords, which is here. And I know it evokes a lot of different emotions, a lot of different reactions. It offends some people. Um, I know when I first saw it, it took my breath away. And when I first saw it, I thought, uh-oh, this might be a triggering card for some of my folks who are, um, I have folks who have perhaps been a part of the sex trade or they um, are sex workers, for example. And I just thought this, makes, this feels like it would be triggering for them. But it was funny. It didn't even cross my mind to look at this person as a slave. And I could see it. I guess I could see why people would say that they think these are lashings, even though these do to me don't look like lashings. Um, but you know, I could see that too. I wear head wraps, including in this style. I don't always wear it on the YouTube channel, but I do, um, you know, when I'm about, when I'm just out and about sometimes and I just did not see what other people were seeing, but that's the beauty of art, right? Um, art is designed to be the voice of a time, of a place, a space, of a people. And I don't know if people are offended because they think that Chris Ann should not be tackling such an image in her deck. They feel like maybe non-people of color shouldn't have a say. Are they offended that it's in there and it's triggering for people? Which I can understand that. Which, just so everyone is clear, Chris Ann has been profusely apologetic about this. She um, is sending out a new, newly designed card to the people who have the deck and for the new decks that she'll be producing. And she, I think, is handling this whole situation as a total class act. So I want to say that first and foremost. And I want to say that also, there is nothing wrong with finding offense to something and voicing it. There's nothing wrong with expressing how you feel about something. I think where we run into trouble, though, is when we start imposing our, our triggers, our issues onto others. I'm guilty of it, too, by the way. I'm not saying I'm not above this. I've, I've done it. And so I think we all can learn from this, this whole experience. This card, it brings up a lot of things for people. And they, you know, for better or for worse, they reached out to Chris Ann and had some things to say about it. And she has since responded. And I don't want to feel like we want to silence folks from saying what they need to say. But I also want to make it very clear that I still stand behind the fact that I am not, as a person of color, as a woman of color, offended by this card. In fact, I want to talk more about, there's a few things I want to talk about here. First of all, I think that it is important whether a person of color or a non-person of color incorporate diversity into the decks. We've asked that and deck creators are responding to that. With that being said, they need to consider being respectful and responsible in how they deliver the diversity that they want to include in their decks. And I think that Chris Ann hit that. She was respectful and she was responsible as best she could. How could she ever have known that this was going to be super offensive? Maybe, you know, in retrospect, maybe she got clues. But when she was creating this on Kickstarter, I don't really recall, and I could be wrong, I don't really recall a lot of people up in arms about it. And most of those people who are backing these decks are people who are going to be using the decks with the greater community, right? Tarot readers or collectors, maybe. So... At that time, no one really took issue with it. It actually drew me in because there's so few decks out there that even remotely depict people of a different range of colors. Brown people, black people are so diverse in, in their skin color. It was exciting to see that. It was exciting to see someone have a head wrap. It was exciting to see someone in a powerful card like the Ten of Swords. 
healing and recovery and taking back her power. I looked at it as a woman taking back her power. I didn't see slave. And you would think me being a direct descendant of slavery, American slavery, you would think that if I was to be triggered, this would do it. But it didn't. It didn't hit me in that way. It hit me as a woman more so than anything. I feel for women who have been beaten down, mutilated, torn apart from the inside out. And that's what triggered for me. That's what artwork is. When we start trying to censor people and try to quiet and squelch it, even if they're a non-person of color, that's running dangerous territory. Do I see decks that aren't always depicting, you know, how I would like um, certain things to be depicted? No, and I don't purchase those decks. I simply say, okay, that's that artist's interpretation of that. I'm going to simply move on. I respect their ability to create art and do their thing. But, you know, I'm not going to participate in that. I have a particular uh, indie deck creator in mind that I don't know. They're not from this country. And I don't know if they're aware that certain things that they include in their collage style decks, if they are not aware that some of the things that they include are very racially charged and literally like just disgusting and i'm not going to mention their names i'm just going to simply say i don't know if they know maybe they do maybe they don't but i'm just not going to participate in that that's their right to put out their artwork and do them do i feel like they were being responsible yes no the reason being is they're not from this country they don't understand the long history we have with racial issues perhaps maybe they do know and they don't care and that's not acting responsibly but i moved on to see the backlash that was towards chris ann was very upsetting for me because people want to be defending people of color to the end in the ends doesn't justify the means sometimes though and i'm grateful for people who defend people of color we need we need those warriors so much but we have to be careful you there's you have to yes speak up if you need to speak up but be careful on how you do it and we all could take a lesson from that myself included i'm not you know sitting up here throwing rocks at glass houses here i've had my moments as well but i'm telling you she had no ill intent and i'm sure that if people individually reached out to her in a private manner she she probably would have just been like okay this next printing is going to have a new ten of swords we wouldn't even probably have all this hoopla but you know what i'm always grateful for everything that comes about and everything that happens including these kind of um conflicts and debates because we need to talk more and more about it we also need to talk about okay we want more diversity the, the deck creators are doing that um, sometimes we take issue with how they do it but and then we want we don't want non-people of color to tackle said issues like slavery you know, tra sex trafficking, etc. We don't want them to tackle that. We don't, we feel like it, it should only be exclusive to the people who are affected. But I don't necessarily buy into that adage either. And here's why. We don't have time to sit up here and wait around. If a, a non-person of color does their art respectfully and responsibly, but still is their voice and still it's their perspective, you know, their perspective and they're doing a snapshot in time of how things are. There should be no problem with that. We should celebrate that. We should also help those who are people in color elevate their projects to such a way that they are supported fully and be able to get their decks birth out and that's the next leg of the journey with this. But to sit up there and say, no, 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 a non-person of color should never do that. That's defeating what we exactly asked for, which is all creators, all artists, no matter the skin color, to 
to bring more inclusion into their decks. Why on God's earth would we say that non-people of color, non-women, should not should not broach strong, sensitive topics and should not broach strong, sensitive images? The Ten of Swords in and of itself is, it's major. It's a big deal. It is a coming to an end of a way of things being and having a new beginning, a new dawn. And usually it's pretty painful. Not all the time with the Ten of Swords is every moment of your new, your ending and your new beginning going to be painful as we see here. This is, this is the part of the Ten of Swords where she's risen up, she's gotten up, she's moving on, and now or she's going to move on. This is, this is where Chris Ann decided to start the journey, to start telling the tale for this Ten of Swords. Most times we see the Ten of Swords very graphically with someone laid on their tummy and there's backs, you know, and there's knives in their back. There's swords in their back. But yet we have a problem with this. I want to know also, why do we have a problem with this? Why can't we have more of a discussion? I'm going to be quite frank here. And this is probably going to offend some people. But, you know, I, I want to have frank discussions. I love African decks. I have like one fully melanated deck that I love and I've been starting to use in client readings. Um, I have like another one, another deck that has different... Um, what is it? Oh gosh, I can't think of it. The word Pathions. Um, and it includes, you know, like um, the Egyptians and then the Bantu peoples. And so I have a deck like that. But I don't really have a deck that really speaks to the slave experience, that really speaks to the post slavery and the reconstruction period. It doesn't, there's no um, really mention of the Jim Crow days. I'm excited about the Hoodoo Tarot. I think that's the name. The Hoodoo Tarot that's coming out in February 2020. It's going to be mass produced. The creator's name escapes me. But the reason I'm excited about that deck is because that, what she is depicting, and I encourage you to look at that and let's support her and let's raise her up here. The reason why is because she's she has, in 78 cards, she has now, told a story about my people, my people who have been here for hundreds of years as a result of slavery, not my people. I don't even know. I have so many African countries in my bloodline, according to my ancestry, that it's going to take me some time to figure out all that I need to figure out and all I want to figure out about myself. It's going to take probably a lifetime, but I want more images depicting of what happened to my people when we were here hundreds of years like it just is frustrating to me and I don't always resonate with solely African debts like one would think if it, it, it this is very intimate what I'm sharing with you because I need to share this with you that I totally respect and love and want many 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 more African inspired decks where you have tribal people that's gorgeous and we need more of it and I'm never going to turn it away. But I'm not going to sit up here and say that I'm, I'm saddened that we don't have more decks to speak about the experience of like those times that I've, I mentioned earlier in this conversation. Um, the people that are depicted in the Hoodoo Tarot look more like my, my peoples, the people who have been here for hundreds of years who don't look like like people in Africa anymore. We do. There are many of us. I, I still have many features that are African, and I'm grateful for it. You know, like, yeah, I'm grateful. But there's many aspects that are different than the African experience. That's to the Black American experience. That's to probably the Afro-Brazilian experience. You know what I'm saying? It's like... It, so, it's, so when I saw this card, I got excited. I'm like, oh, this is a glimmer of hope. Chris Ann, her beautiful self created this and maybe it'll inspire some of us who are artistic to, to make a full on deck. Perhaps a person of color will be inspired. I'm not going to lie. I don't have it in me to create a full on tarot deck right now. I don't know if ever, you know, I just don't. 
I'm not going to sit up here and talk all this mess about how a, a deck should be created by a person of color because A, they need the support to get that there and it and, and ain't me. I'm, I'm going to support you. I'm going to buy your deck, but it ain't going to be me creating it. I don't want the headache of creating a deck. I don't. And many of us don't, but we also shouldn't be the peanut gallery either when someone, whether they're a person of color or not, decides to take it upon themselves to incorporate diversity and then we react like this. And so I'm okay with reaction too. I'm okay with discussion. I just want us to kind of understand what we're asking here, what we're asking. And for me personally, it's respectful and responsible with the artwork. You hit those two things, you're probably going to have my support. If it's not, then I'm probably just going to quietly move on and move on. But uh, yeah, I just thought I had to jump in and say something because it was just interesting to me how everything kind of unfolded and we started fighting each other versus listening to what we're trying to say here and uh, for both sides. And I see both sides. Slavery has a, it has a legacy here that affects us even today. And I am the first to admit that. However, I also want us to be careful in how we go about fighting that good fight. And we want to make sure that if we're asking for more diversity, that we help our brothers and sisters um, with their creations. If some, you know, I, so, I'm glad that things are starting to wind themselves down with this topic, but I'm here to also tell you, you will probably see me using this deck. I actually really enjoy the Light Seer's Tarot, and I've started using it in client readings, and the Ten of Swords hasn't come up yet in the client reading or reading of mine, but I'm not too worried about the reaction. The only thing is I will take, I will go ahead and accept and receive Chris Ann's other card that she's created a because if a deck creator is sending another card i'm gonna take it <laughs> b because maybe for my people who might be triggered such as people who really were traumatized by racial issues or traumatized by you know abuse for example maybe this isn't the card to include if i know ahead of time i'm doing a reading for someone who might have those kind of triggers. If I know ahead of time, I'm probably not going to use this particular deck because of this card. But now with this alternative card, I can pop that in there, use it as I need to, but use this for myself and for readings for people who I know would appreciate it. Again, there's nothing wrong with having offense or taking offense, but I really think we have to be responsible in how we show dissent. We're now in a very important time in history where we have to really be thoughtful about things. And I also encourage people, if they haven't done so, to take an art theory class or an art, you know, some like at your museum, maybe there's um, some critique um, classes that you could take. I took some, um, you know, at community college. And so it's important to understand that there will be artwork out there, including tarot artwork that's going to trigger you. And are you going to always just raise up and rail against and fight? Or are you going to do some internal work and start going within and, and saying, you know what, that triggered me. Why is that? What's that about? And can I have the, the critical eye to be able to understand it in historical context, in the artistic context, and be able to remove myself from the story a little bit to be able to say, okay, this is a fine piece of art. It bothers me. I'm not going to have it in my home, but I can be able to appreciate the lines and the, the coloration and the, and the, you know, and she, you could see a little bit of the pain in her, in her face, but you also could see a woman who's about to lift her head to the sun and be alive again and be ready to fight and go on and do her, the rest of her life. You sh that is important. I don't know if we also miss out on the opportunity to recognize that tarot is art. And I, for one, am grateful that Chris Ann opened this dialogue, opened this conversation with her art. That's what art does. That's what it's supposed to do. I don't want no dull ass 
Rider Waite Smith Tarot Deck Radiant Rite Rate. I can't even say it. R W S as my deck of choice if that's what you want then go for it if you want um, a fully melanated deck go for it you know if you want a diverse deck have it but come on folks you can't it's like burger king you know you can't well it's not like burger king you can't always have it your way and you have to be able to be in a in this world and be able to understand that but we also have to be able to speak out when we need to, but responsibly and respectfully. All right, that's it, guys. I wanted to keep this short, but of course I couldn't. I had lots to talk about here. Let me make sure I, so yeah, make sure I'm covering everything here. And I just want to also invite opinions from you all about this topic. I know many of the Facebook groups have shut it down. They don't want people talking about it anymore in terms of a debate. I get that. It's really probably a nightmare to manage in your Facebook group. I don't know, you know, but dialogue about this is important. It takes the taboo and the weirdness out. It makes it where we start to get on the same common ground. And that's important. And we need that dialogue. We need that safe space to be able to do that. And people may not agree with me. And that's okay, too. If you comment and you don't agree that this should be in the deck, I'm not going to be mad at you. I want to have an honest discussion. So, and I'm, but you may, you're, I'm going to let you know now, you're probably not going to change my mind in terms of how I feel about this deck and the relationship I'm building with this particular deck. But I'm not going to be mad at you if you say I never want to use this deck again or I don't like that card or blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm not going to, there's no debate there. It's just having a healthy debate about. Should we just be like any time we see something we don't like? Should we just shut it down? And also, do we not want non-people of color to tackle such su subjects? And where is the support? I want to see more support for tarot and oracle creators who are people of color. Let's all rally around them it's because they're doing something that's super important too. And we rally also around non-people of color who are doing the same thing. This is important work here, and I just can't miss this opportunity to talk about it. So give me your thoughts to share with me, share with your peeps. I'm not always able to hop onto the comments um, as timely as I like. I do go through them, though, when I can. So if I don't respond right away, don't worry. It's not that I don't see your comment or that I'm not going to ever comment. I probably will. You'll probably get a little, cut, little notification from me. But talk amongst each other. And be what, my friends? What are we going to be? Respectful and responsible. Or responsible and respectful. Whichever order you want. R and R. And let that be our guiding light. And let's start healing. All right? All right. Much love to you all. I'm so happy to be in this community. I'm so happy to be amongst great people. And I'm so happy that we're finally having these discussions in the community. Yay. Yay, right? So I will chat with you all later. Much love. Many blessings.